Y'all, what's up? Your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. We're gonna get into actually really fast, y'all. This ain't even gonna be a long review at all. This is gonna be hella short because we're talking about growing up hip hop. Let's be real, growing up hip hop this season is a flop. Growing up hip hop is a flop, is a flop, is a flop. Um, I just we need more people, we need different people, we need more stories. I got into Eric and Aaliyah's ass last up uh last week's for last week's episode because they think they're being slick by digging into everybody else's mess, you know, over there stirring the pot. And we're not going to be digging over there in their backyard because they, you know, keeping everybody else, you know, shit, you know, the dust stirred up on everybody else's mess. But, uh, bitch, I see you, okay? Um, but overall, as far as growing up hip hop goes, yeah, we definitely, we got, there's some more kids out there that definitely got a lot of shit to say about how they grew up with parents in the industry. So we need to go find them people, okay? Um, because here real soon, at, you know, real soon, Sam's ass is going to be locked up. Um, clearly Egypt ass is knocked up. Um, and there's going to be nothing left to really just kind of talk about. We're going to sit there and watch Egypt go visit her nigga in jail and, you know, peek through the glass, you know, pregnant belly and all with the baby taking, taking him or her to go see Sam every other week. I think not. <laughs> I think not. All right. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into this episode, you guys. Like I said, it ain't too much, but let's go ahead and dig into it. Um, we basically open up with Angela and Vanessa. I still, still firstly, personally feel that, I don't know, there is something about Angela that I think, I think we all know growing up, Angela felt like the, the smaller sister of the two people looked at Angela as maybe not not as appealing or you know not like Vanessa Angela grew up under Vanessa's shadow and I think a part of her still treats Vanessa with a little bit of resentment that that's her experience compared to Vanessa there is something about because Vanessa's always vying to hang out with Angela and like spend sister time and be with her and Angela always just gives her the <laughs> you know she like shoes her off and it's just kind of like I don't know something about Angela's vibe is not clicking with me um but nonetheless they in the car um basically talking about Angela wanting to save her eggs uh SJ he wants a sibling and then she also feels a certain type of way because you know he's at school and she knows she probably sees understands that he probably sees other kids you know looking at both of their parents and or playing with siblings and stuff like that so I get it you know whatever so she goes in there to see, you know, if her eggs are fertile enough, you know, make sure her eggs ain't, you know, powdered eggs. Um, and apparently the lady says, obviously, they're raising it against time. She's 34. But as of right now, her follicles, you know, look nice and plump and healthy. So that's, you know, a good thing. Um, she's like, do you have a sperm donor? She's like, no, but that's why I'm, you know, I'm doing this. And I definitely am here for women you know, if you want to save your eggs until the right nigga come along, that definitely is what to do. I think, you know, the direction of women has definitely changed. It's not, oh, let me find a nigga her even get pregnant. It's no, I'm going to wait to have, I'm going to wait till I find a dude that's worthy of me, you know, giving him a child. You know, there's still some ladies out there who feel like popping out a baby's going to keep a nigga. <laughs> Bet that didn't work out, did it? Um... Or they feel like, oh, creating this family, like, you know, to fulfill this idea of like, oh, you know, I'm gonna have a, a man and, oh, you know, the house with the white picket fence and all the kids. And then you realize that shit is all huh, a, a disaster. Um, they really sold us a lot of bullshit with this fairy tales, you know, as kids and stuff like that. Because <laughs> if I had to choose what type of, you know, fairy tale I would like, I'm leaning more towards the Will and Jada end of it all. You know, this idea of monogamy and it's just all a facade. I'm not getting a relationship with no nigga to, you know, try to have this idea of monogamy. We there for one another. And I know this nigga cheating on me every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, with said side bitch. And I'm supposed to act like it didn't happen just because I've afforded this certain lifestyle. Uh, I think not. Okay. Um, yeah, I just went off on a rant there. But nonetheless, you know, Angela, I do like the fact that she is saying, look, I'm going to save my eggs until the right man comes along and I'm just not going to rush it. I think Angela feels because she's 34. It's just like, you know, I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. But just, you know, when the right dude come along because you sitting here rushing into relationships 
moving across the country, moving to Miami for that dumbass boxer. And that ended literally as fast as y'all got together. So clearly, like, stop rushing it, okay? Um, moving on. Um, we see this little studio scene. Um, Lazy Bone is kind of becoming like a mentor to the to like the younger dudes or whatever. So he's in the studio with Sam and he's asking how he's doing. And Sam definitely knows how to like meticulously put in there that basically he's the eye, he's the work behind it all. You know, he just kind of like drops little breadcrumbs to just like, I guess, put out there to the world. Like, you know, I'm in there, you know, the way he was like, oh, you know, I'm the pin behind everything. You know, I help, you know, Egypt and, you know, Pep with a couple of things. You know, I'm just feel like it's, I'm ready to go out there and get my, you know, my shine on, go out there and find my audience and, you know, release my music. So it's like, Egypt, I know you like to tell people, oh, Sam isn't, you know, Sam isn't trying to take her, you know, Sam isn't all up in my career. You know, Sam, he wants me to succeed and stuff like that. But he's always trying to find a way to make sure his name is put in there somewhere in regards to you. And that scene and what he said just proved it. But, um, he lazy one was like, yeah, you know, go out there, you perfect your craft and everything. Sam talking about he got to teach Egypt how to work the studio and produce and all that type of stuff. Cause when he go away, you know, she's going to try to learn it for herself. Um, and you know, lazy boat asked Sam about obviously the case. And he's like, bro, you got, you got four felonies. Like that ain't no small thing. And Sam, this whole season has been on, Oh, you know, I ain't worried. You know, I'm gonna let God handle it. I know what I did. You know, we, we gonna let those lawyers handle it. You know, I ain't nervous about nothing. It's like, you're not nervous about jail. And we know niggas in jail is going to know that you was boxing with your ass cheeks out, bruh. So if you boxing with your ass cheeks out <laughs> on OnlyFans, bitch, what's going to happen when you have your ass cheeks out in the shower? Like, you might want to be concerned, Sam. But Lazy, like, I hope he, you know, he not namaste or meditate on that shit and try to take it more seriously. But um, Egypt comes in uh, with her dry fro. And, you know, checks in on Sam and, you know, she lets Lazy Bone know, you know, I'm a little nervous, I'm stressed. And, you know, he's like, I get it. You know, y'all just make sure y'all there for one another. And then he leaves the studio and basically Egypt is talking to him like, you know, I am worried. Like, I am concerned about you. Like, I don't want to do life without you. And he keeps giving her the typical, like, reverse psychology. No, babe, you go on. You live your life and do you. Don't worry about me. I, I want you to go out and do your thing. And that's what people typically do. They push them away to have, like, to basically have them run back, basically. And so Egypt is just, just sucking it all up, just munching it all up. And, uh, and she's just falling down the sand rabbit hole. Oh, we're gonna, I'm gonna be there for you. You know, I'm never gonna let, you know, leave your side. I want to be with you. You know, you're the one I want to spend my life with. And he's like, are you sure about that? That's 10 to 15 years. Like, shoot, you go a couple of years without sex, what's going to happen? And that's a good, that's a good question, Egypt. What you going to do when you get locked up 10 to 15? You going to get you a girlfriend? Because you look like Butch right now. So you going to get you a girlfriend, you know, like a young and made type who can hit you with a strap on? Or, you know, are you going to get you another nigga on the side who was willing to sign an NDA so you can get your rocks off while Sam is locked up? Like... What's gonna be it? Like, don't tell me you're gonna pull this whole Amaretta bullshit because, bitch, it's not cute. It's not cute. Like, that ride or die shit now is for the birds. Caca, okay? Oh, my bitch, fuck that. Um, so yeah, they basically on this, you know, ride or die, Bonnie and Clyde bullshit, whatever. Um, we see another scene with Angela talking with her friend, basically about dating and trying to find the right people and all that type of stuff. Wasn't too much going on. I guess Angela has kind of mastered popping in when she need to. Like, when, if she's not, if she don't need to show for filming, like, she's not. Like, she only, they use Angela and Vanessa basically for filler scenes, honestly. Um, and when they need some stuff and they just kind of come show up and do their little talk or whatever and then dip. Basically, she, all she was talking about was SJ and, you know, letting the right man come along and maybe finding a matchmaker who can help her uh, with the vetting process because when you are a successful woman like you ain't got time to be vet through these niggas because the first six months they're gonna be all you know good and the man that you you think are for your dreams then that veil then that veil lift up and then you realize oh oh bro I should have dropped your ass a long time ago 
right? And so Angela is in that caliber of women who definitely should be going to, you know, a millionaire matchmaker or something like that. But uh, moving on, uh, let's get into somebody who really needs, needs some motherfucking help. And that is Miss Savannah. Miss Savannah, Cree finally goes over to see her and she... Cree, both you and Savannah really lack accountability. I don't like the fact, one, Cree, when she was confronted with how she acted at that party, especially with Sequoia, she tried to throw the colorism thing out there. And it's like, bitch, first of all, Sequoia is all of maybe a shade, a half a shade lighter than you. So don't even pull that. Uh, and then secondly, like, you buffed up in that conversation. Like, you were antagonizing. And you were, as you said, told Savannah, like, in public, you know, I'm going to rock you. But behind the scenes, I'm going to have to let you know, like, girl, you fucking up. And Savannah, she was like, man, that's what I am. You know, that's what it is. Like, you know, I ain't let nobody, like, cap me. I Like, Savannah's always on this, like, you know, just rah, rah, rah energy. And it's like, it's not necessary. Like, Savannah's always looking for a fight when there isn't one. Bitch, communication. Um, and that's why Cree's kind of laughing because it's like, girl, you got namaste and all types of, you know, peace be still in your house and everything. Talking about yoga, but your energy is just not representing that. And so she's like, yeah, you know, that's why I, I'm going I'm to talk to what's the, what's her name? Gladys or something with a G. Um, her therapist, she said she'd been going to for the past couple of months or couple of years. And it's kind of like, bitch, it ain't working. I know growth is a pro process, so I'm going to need you to work through that. And from what we saw, the little snippet of her going to therapy and she was talking about her mom, I definitely see her mom being the type of mom that probably took her anger out. A lot of times parents don't understand what they are upset about with their spouse. They take out on their kids, which is why I don't like this idea of like men not understanding your fucked up behavior affects your child. Stevie J, the Nick Cannons, the, you know, the futures of the world. It's just like all of y'all do not understand. You are affecting the mental health of your baby mom or wife or woman that you are with. And that then affects your child. Like you can't be out here treating her like trash and think that it's not going to affect your child. And I think Savannah probably grew up with a hard ass mom from what I understand and what she sold. And she's holding a lot of resentment. And like her therapist said, you're going to have to learn how to forgive in order to allow yourself to understand not every situation deserves a fight. Um, she definitely needs to sit in a therapy session with her dad, especially after, I don't know if she saw, I don't know how she couldn't have seen what her daddy did, getting his ass on an interview, getting topped off in an interview, just nasty, just nasty ass niggas, okay? Um, but Savannah, I think really most of all needs to speak with her dad and Stevie J, stop ignoring it. I think Stevie J is very much aware of how he's lacked as a father, how he's lacked as a parent, and he does not want to address it. And he, you know, there was that one episode where he went to talk to Savannah. He was like, I, you know, I see she has that anger in her and, you know, I'm sure I play a part in that. Yes. Yes, Stevie. Absolutely. You play a huge part in it, my nigga. Okay. Uh, and you need to go sit down with Savannah so she can, you know, stop being all rah, 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 because she gonna run across the right one and get that ass beat. Okay, Savannah is one of them girls that ain't gonna learn that you can't be chomping off at the mouth and be all, you know, nuck if you bug, want to square up with people because you're gonna find the right one who got time today and got bail money waiting right there on the side. Okay, but Cree, I know she was like using Savannah as like basically as a scapegoat for why she acted the way she acted. Girl, you acted the way you acted because you wanted to. And both y'all is boo boo the fool. Next case. Um, TT, TT talking to Vanessa, what much going on, basically talking about being a mom and making up with Egypt. So we finally get to, um, Egypt meeting up with, with, um, with TT and it's awkward. Like it's hella awkward. They're doing the, you know, <laughs> the fake smiles and they finally sit down. And what honestly annoyed me about their scene is how much they were just dancing around 
the issue. Well, you know, we want to move forward and I don't want to go back there. And, you know, there was so much that happened. And, you know, I know you feel like, you know, you lost trust and me too. We feel the same way. And like they were going forward and then kept going back because at the end of the day, y'all are not what should have been the first question between either one of them was, okay, where do you feel like I your my where do you feel like your issue with me is like where did you originally have an issue for this to start you know the downfall between us and the truth is okay on Egypt side you do have the fact that okay TT Loki was inputting herself in your relationship she can apologize for that and then on your side honestly the hard hard downfall of y'all's relationship is on the onus on you of Sam because how dare you sit there and try to tell TT to, T -T to her face, I would never choose a man over you, but that's what you did. You literally let Sam pump your head up with your, hey, your cousin wants your nigga. She was, she was, she was wanting me. And you believe it. And you believe it. And you attacked her like you believed it. Deep down, deep down, Egypt, you know that sounded stupid. Oh, TT was Sam? Really? 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 girl okay and so they both have their apologies at hand but Egypt keeps trying to be like well you know every everybody likes Sam and the only people I can say that didn't like Sam were the ones who who, who talked to you ma'am ma'am are you not watching Sam's actions on this show you really don't think Sam has done nothing to other people to make them feel like they don't like him TT is absolutely right. Like she is blind to trying to see that, hey, you know, y'all have done some stuff and people, because she, she said it the last time they all got together in the hotel, people weren't like, like you, you encourage people not to like Sam. No, bitch, we are viewing, we are watching the show. We are watching you and Sam. We are watching how he's acting. We don't like that because we see his actions, not because of TT and just because TT is able to point out the same stuff that as viewers we see and that other people see. Now you want to make it her fault that why people don't like Sam? Egypt, no, no, no. But here they are basically trying to, they're going to sweep the shit under the rug because they know on either side, like nobody's really going to get to what they're wanting. So at this point, Egypt's like, look, you know, he's going to be my husband and you like him at one point. So maybe you get to maybe liking him, you know, again one day, um, and she's like, he's going to be your husband. You know, that, that's you, boo-boo. Um, and, you know, her eyebrows were killing me in the scene. Who did them? Because they were dark as fuck and too big. Looked like big-ass caterpillars. Um, and at this point, she's like, look, I'm going to, you know, I'm ready to see late. I'm ready to be his auntie. Like, whenever, you know, you're ready to move forward, and you know, I'm here. And that's basically all they can really do is just sit there and just, just fake their way through it until they eventually just forget why they were mad in the first place. Um, so the last scene is Egypt going to Sam. He sitting in his goddamn chair lounge. I don't know who that girl was. Was it somebody somebody related to Sam, like the cousin or something, something like that? But basically, Egypt goes to him and lets him know that you know he got she got done talking with TT. And I'm upset that his first thing was to be like, who won? Who was the most upset? Like, who who came out on top? Who was more angry? Like, who 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 brought up stuff first? Like, I don't think he genuinely wants Egypt to make up with with Titi. I think he enjoys the fact that as long as the family's at cahoots, he knows like Egypt is going to be more close to him as long as she's in cahoots with everybody else. Like, if they have an ear to Egypt, he knows there's always going to be people to be able to look. To say to Egypt, look, hey, over there, hey, over there, look at him. Like, he fucking up. And everybody had reason to, Sam. You got kids and you ain't paying the child support. How are you affording the lifestyle that Egypt, you know, what, what is going on? Like, I, we know Egypt and Peppa is bankrolling y'all's lifestyle. That little $3,000 that you was shaking ass for on OnlyFans was not doing nothing. Let's be real. Um, But... The fact that he went there was kind of like, Ugh. and then she was like, it wasn't no fight. Like nobody walked out. We just talked about, you know, all our issues. And I do feel like, you know, she's, you know, still not to the point where she wants to admit that, 
you know, there were some things on her end, but you know, there's nothing I can really do. We're just going to have to move forward. And so she talked about moving forward and she was like, he was like, well, you know, that's good news, but I got some bad news. Like they're pushing back the case and you know, my lawyer needs more time because they got footage from, you know, the restaurant. Sounds like that footage from the restaurant is showing that you in Egypt is lying down boots. Because you're not going to sit there and tell me that Sam wasn't antagonizing that fight. Because we watched him on this show. We know Sam got a, got a mouth on him. He loved to talk and he'd be with the rah-rah. So, you, I'm just like... The fact that they're putting it back and your lawyer is saying they need more time after getting that footage lets me know all I need to know. Um, and so now, Egypt rushing was like, well, I, I, I feel like, you know, the way life is going and how your case is going, like, I want to get married. Let's elope. And the fact that she wanted to elope and she didn't drink in that scene with TT, somebody's pregnant. Somebody's pregnant. Somebody's with child. Egypt. Egypt. Don't tell me you really did this, boo-boo. You said you want to, you know, a career acting, singing. She just seems to be doing everything that's pointing her in the opposite direction. Yikes. <laughs> um, She's basically rushing Sam, like, let's go do it. Like, let's do it this week. And he's like, uh, no, like, let's talk to your mom and dad. Like, I, I don't want, no, no, no. Wait a minute now, like. I feel like that's kind of, you know, wrong. And she's like, well, you already asked my dad for my hand in marriage. He's like, but still, like, let's talk with Tretch. And also that, you know, Egypt has some issues to work out because she constantly talks about how her mom was on the road. And, you know, a lot of times she chose her. And a lot of industry kids talk about how they always felt like, you know, their parents weren't around and stuff like that. And how they chose, you know, their career or going on tour and, you know, stuff like that. Tyran had that same argument about Peppa we know that we know Peppa loves to choose a good nigga over her kids we have seen it okay um but the fact that she's rushing to the altar and we've seen their their wedding with that ugly ass dress she picked on from Shein um was tragic but that's that that was that was look I was growing up hip-hop y'all I I'm ready for another season like whatever um what do you guys think about TT and Egypt making up who you guys feel is more at fault in regards to the relationship, you know, not really um, as far as the relationship falling. How do you guys, do you guys feel like Egypt is pregnant? Y'all think she's pregnant? Do you guys feel like she's going to be able to hold Sam down for them 10, 15 years that he, that he, he locked up? They won't let him out. <laughs> um, but yeah, you guys, that was Growing Up Hip Hop. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure to follow both of my Instagrams, my first and my backup um, Twitter Tag, post, share, all that good stuff. And congratulations to Scotty for 30K. Y'all make sure to go follow, follow Scotty by nature. He is doing the damn thing. Um, he's definitely, and y'all, we're going to be collaborating real soon, y'all. So y'all stay tuned for that. But till next time, deuces.